let's come down to the introduction. At the end of uh, 2019, a novel uh, coronavirus uh, was identified uh, as the cause of a cluster of uh, pneumonia uh, cases in Wuhan. It's a city in the Yubei province uh, of uh, China. Uh, the novel coronavirus belongs uh, to the family uh, of coronaviridae and was named uh, as the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus uh, 2. Uh, the abbreviation is SARS-CoV-2. It was seen to be highly homologous to the SARS coronavirus, uh, SARS-CoV-1, if you want, that was uh, responsible for the uh, respiratory pandemic in 2002-2003 period. The World Health Organization uh, declared uh, the outbreak uh, as a public health uh, emergency of international concern on uh, 30 January 2020 and a pandemic in, uh, on 11 March 2020. This novel virus uh, is reported uh, to have uh, uh, been transmitted from human uh, to human with uh, variable symptoms uh, profile and uh, underlying uh, health uh, conditions that affect uh, the cardiovascular, the respiratory and immune system confer an increased risk of severe illness and death. Okay. So, you see in uh, this uh, slide uh, the cumulative number of confirmed COVID-19 cases worldwide in nearly one year of uh, evolution, and in which each country is colored uh, according to the severity of the pandemic. Globally, over 90 million uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been reported. The cases has been uh, reported in all continents except Antarctica. The reported uh, cases counts uh, underestimates the overall uh, burden uh, of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic as only a fraction uh, of acute infection is diagnosed and reported. Uh, zero prevalence uh, surveys in the United States uh, and uh, Europe have suggested uh, that uh, the rate uh, of uh, prior exposure to the SARS-CoV-2, as reflected by seropositivity, exceeds the incidence of reported cases by approximately 10 folds or more. In Qatar, the total uh, cumulative cases is uh, 147,000 uh, nearly, from which uh, 143,000 uh, already recovered, uh, and uh, about uh, we have actually about 3,000 uh, uh, active uh, cases. Let's come to sport now. When it comes to sport, one first uh, important observation. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused the most significant disruption to the worldwide sporting calendar since World War II. We know that regular physical activity or exercise is known to be associated to an improvement in the immune function, optimizing the body defense mechanisms against infection. Physically active uh, individuals have as well a lower probability of developing clinical conditions as hypertension, diabetes, or other cardiovascular diseases, which are associated, of course, with a higher risk of a complicated curse in the case of COVID-19 infection. So we could say that COVID-19 is not dangerous for athletes. However, even though the risk of severe illness is low in athlete or should be low, even mild illness might interrupt the training and competition. Furthermore, it's difficult, though, to have exact numbers for the sport population as it includes different levels of practice and age categories and type of sports, etc. In Qatar, I can give you the example of Qatar, for the actual tested uh, practicing football players from the first and second league, and here I thank uh, Olaf, uh, Kerim and Montasar for uh, the data, the number was estimated on January 15th, 2021, to 212 positive cases and 112 reactive cases on PCR. The serology found for our football players, 489 players with antibodies. Let's talk now about symptoms. 
Infected athletes with COVID-19 are often asymptomatic, but may have mild to severe symptoms that occur, that occur 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus with an average of 5-6 days. If any athlete feel, uh, feels unwell or has fever or any other symptoms that I'll describe now, he should contact his team physician or primary care doctor and follow the public health recommendation in our case in Qatar to call the 16,000 phone number. What about common symptoms? Common symptoms are fever, cough, and tiredness. There is less common symptoms that include aches and pains, digestive uh, symptoms, and the most famous perhaps sign, which is the loss of taste or smell. Uncommon but severe symptoms include respiratory symptoms, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, pain or pressure in the chest, and speech or movement loss. Athletes should pay attention to, emer to emergency warning signs like trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion, etc. Let's talk now about transmission. According to current evidence, the virus uh, causing COVID-19 is primarily transmitted between people through respiratory droplets and contact routes. According to the World Health Organization, droplets transmission occurs when a person is in close contact within one meter with a sick person. By exposing his mucosae, mucosae, mouth and nose, or conjunctiva, which is the eyes, to potentially infected respiratory droplets, of course. Transmission may also occur through formites in the immediate environment around the infected person. Airborne transmission may also be possible in specific circumstances and settings. In the context of rapidly evolving evidence on the topic, it is advised to regularly do a check for updates on these guidelines. Let's talk now about pathophysiology. Although much has been uh, discovered regarding uh, transmission and uh, presentation, less is known about pathophysiology of COVID-19, of course. An overview of the disease pathophysiology is shown in this figure. But let me talk about the virus itself first. The coronaviruses are made up of four proteins, structural proteins, of course, namely S for spike, perhaps the most important protein, M for membrane, N, uh, E, sorry, for envelope, and N for nucleocapsid protein. The S protein is uh, seen uh, to be protruding from the viral uh, surface and is the most important uh, one for host attachment and penetration. The, this protein is composed of two functional uh, subunits, S1 and S2, among which S1 is responsible for binding uh, to the host cell receptor, and S2 uh, subunit plays a role in the fusion of uh, viral uh, and host cellular uh, uh, membranes. Let's take a look to this figure. After the binding uh, of the inhaled uh, SARS-CoV-2 to ciliated uh, secretory cells in the nasal epithelium via ACE2, don't forget this receptor, it's a functional receptor for SARS-CoV SARS -CoV virus and uh, highly expressed uh, on the pulmonary epithelial cells. You understand why the compli complications are mainly respiratory in the lungs. And then a viral replication and a local propagation happens with a limited immune uh, response. <clears throat> Sorry. At this stage, about 80% uh, of cases, so four people out of five, uh, for these cases, for 80%, the infection is contained uh, with viral clearance after 10 to 14 days of infection. However, 
For about fifth of the patients, one out of five, the virus reaches the lower respiratory tracts. This causes an invasion of the type 2 pulmonary uh, alveolar uh, epithelial cells via ACE2. You remember, of course, uh, this receptor. Then a chain reaction you see here can lead to diffuse alveolar damage that could result in acute respiratory distress syndrome. You know it uh, with the abbreviation uh, ERDS. The virus also affects, of course, other systems or organs like the gastrointestinal system, the heart, the blood, etc. If you want to go deeper into this, you can read the publications from the World Health Organization, our hospital guideline on the topic, and other trusted resources. You will find so many, so please select the most trusted ones. I advise you here this paper, which is a review of uh, in PubMed of uh, Medline of articles and case reports uh, from uh, 97 to uh, 2020. Let's talk now about uh, prevention. The aim uh, of prevention is to control uh, the pandemic spread by limiting transmission and uh, uh, reducing uh, mortality. There is first uh, the infection control in uh, the health uh, care system setting, which is uh, in our case uh, Aspetar Hospital, our orthopedic and sport medicine hospital, and of course the medical uh, clinics uh, in the different uh, clubs uh, and federation. Then uh, the personal preventive uh, measures including social distancing by avoiding uh, crowds and maintaining a distance of two meters uh, from others, wearing masks, hand hygiene, staying uh, at home uh, when uh, required, avoiding uh, public uh, gatherings, uh, travel restriction with exit or entry screening, uh, and eventually quarantine, contact tracing, very important, and quarantine, as I already said. Additionally, and not uh, less important, respect public health authorities' recommendation. It is very important, and this varies uh, from country to country. And here I am speaking about uh, Qatar, of course. In team sports, like football, in our case, personal contact between players is uh, inevitable. Actual research suggests that football players remain at a distance of more than one meter and a half of another player for the most or the vast majority of time of the game. And encounters are brief. Still, the heavy uh, unprotected breathing during uh, the exercise generates more droplets than normal respira respiration, increasing the, res the risk of uh, exposure. That's why footballers followed a specific protocol on return to training and competition in three phases that we will see later, during which all players and clubs staff, and when I say club staff, I'm speaking about medical, administrative, technical staff and uh, the kit men also, they had the testing to COVID-19. Personally, I already did 31 PCR tests and uh, four uh, and six blood tests uh, since uh, uh, June 25 uh, till now. Let's talk about other promising uh, measures. Clinical trials are also being conducted in the United States and uh, elsewhere to evaluate the safety and the efficacy of pre and uh, post exposure drug prophylaxis against COVID-19 and the vaccines. In this period, we are all speaking about vaccines. Vaccines to prevent SARS-CoV-2 infection are considered the most promising approach for curbing this pandemic. <clears throat> Important to highlight that the prevention modalities and intensity uh, and its intensity is subject to change in accordance with the evolution of the pandemic and the transmission scenario in each country. Let's talk now about testing. 
The first, the first test uh, for COVID-19 that I present you now is the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR. Often, of course, a PCR of the naranzo of the nasopharyngeal or the upper respiratory tract swab to look for viral RNA of SARS-CoV-2. CoV2. This will become positive one two days after the onset of the symptoms. This technique detects only the presence of the virus in uh, athletes and does not give any information on whatever on waiver they have had the disease and recovered or not. It will give you information on that moment, not on the past, on the history, if he was sick or no. And here comes the serology to answer this question. In fact, the serology detects antibodies produced by the patient against SARS-CoV-2 virus. This typically becomes positive two, three weeks after the onset of the symptoms, but may be positive as early as after four days. It is advised, though, that any previously positive athlete is referred to pre-participation health evaluation before resuming any training. And even in this, things evolve. Our uh, management in this, and uh, Dr. Juan Manuel Alonso knows this better, uh, that uh, the screening and how we send our athletes when they are sick and recovered from uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, when we send them to screening, if they were asymptomatic, for example, in the beginning we were sending all. Now when they are asymptomatic, it's different. But this is not the topic of today. Let's talk now about management. I will speak briefly about management. In fact, many people will be able to stay home while they get better as the majority is asymptomatic, especially in the athlete's population. Sometimes they could have mild symptoms that usually take about two weeks to resolve. In this context, self-isolation is important to protect others. A more severe case might need to stay in the hospital, possibly in the intensive care unit, needing oxygen, corticoids, or other specialized care. These are, uh, there, is, uh, there is many trials investigating several classes uh, of uh, drugs for the moment for the treatment of uh, COVID-19. And it is likely, however, that uh, different treatment modalities will be effective in different stages and in different uh, clinical manifestations of the disease. The protocol differs, in fact, as well from country to country. Let's now talk about the impact of COVID-19 on sports. Year 2020 was a unique year. We have been th uh, through a difficult time. We all had, uh, as people working in sport, our, our frustrations with cancelled events, other competitions played behind the closed doors, and postponed uh, uh, tournaments. Also, this decision depended from the distribution of the COVID-19 and its evolution, the evolution of the pandemic, of course, in each country. In football, some countries decided to end their actual season, while others, like Qatar or Germany, postponed the restart to between May and July 2020. You remember Germany when it started in, uh, I think, May 2020. They played behind closed doors where the season left off, the, the previous season, of course, and while implementing strict rules like banning uh, handshakes, spitting, or talking uh, at close uh, proximity to each other, as well as uh, wearing uh, masks for officials and staff members on the bench. In all other sports, seasons were often suspended and international sport events either cancelled or rescheduled. Important to note that the transition period is different from the off-season period 
as it is as it lasted longer and was associated with confinement. Following this, many international federations and sport authorities across the world worked on the stages of return to activity and the consequent prevention protocol. What about specific uh, sports? Why COVID-19 hits some uh, people harder than, the harder than others? True in life and in sports. We are not equal in front of the virus according to the sport we practice and uh, according to many other factors. In fact, the impact of COVID-19 on sport depends first from the sport itself, as I said. Low risk sports are those where social distancing is possible, like shooting, archery, golf. On the opposite, contact sports should be considered high with higher risk, like rugby, football and handball. Outdoor sports will be better ventilated than indoor sports. It's a second factor. Although the distance required for social distancing two meters for those standing still is greater in the slipstream of someone running, it will be 10 meters, or someone cycling, it will be 20 meters. As other factors, we have comorbidities or older age person who are most likely to develop severe COVID-19. Don't forget in uh, our uh, sport team, we don't have only athletes, we have managers, we have coaches, we have medical staff who could be older. And some um, sport practice, I mean, sport practice in the venue facilities with, uh, uh, I mean, um, complying with World Health Organization uh, and uh, Ministry of Public Health recommendation for sport and facilities will have a lower risk uh, of uh, infection. Let's talk now about uh, risk uh, mitigation. The resumption of sport during COVID-19 pandemic was not easy. In fact, Sports authorities, medical and technical staff and athletes followed a stepwise process to ensure the safety of the team group and the wider community. Following two principles, these two principles that you see in the slide, we limit the risk of COVID-19 infection or complication. What are these two uh, principles? First, risk assessment and return to sport arrangements must be compliant with the latest Ministry of Public Health recommendation as this may change over time with the status of the pandemic and we are leaving this. Secondly, resumption of uh, formal training should not occur until appropriate measures specific to the sport and the training environment have been implemented and have been clearly communicated to athletes and all staff involved at the venue. What about resumption of sport? To plan the return to training and sport activity, we need to consider four general principles. The approach to training should be get in, train, get out. It, should, it, it, it seems tough to say this, but it's very important. It is important to minimize unnecessary contact in changing rooms, common area, etc. Prior to resumption of training, sporting organization should have implemented protocols for the management of illness when it occurs in athletes and other personnel. Specific consideration should be made for COVID-19 vulnerable person, such as para-athlete, don't forget the para-athletes, older people with higher risk, with medical conditions, that it could be a coach, it could be an administrative staff, it could be a doctor, uh, as I already said. And last and not least, clubs and individuals should apply a graded return plan to training plan to mitigate injury risk, understanding that a sudden increase in training load 
may predispose to injury. This slide will be a good transition for my, for my next uh, section of this presentation. I present you here the plan produced by, uh, initially produced by the Ministry of Public Health in Qatar for gradual lifting of COVID-19 restriction with four phase plan for return to sport. And for these four phases, only outdoor activities are first allowed for professional sports from coach to player or maximum five players in phase one, less than 10 players in phase two. In phase three, team training with up to 40 people are allowed, amateur sport added and team competition allowed without spectators. In phase four, local and international sport competition will, with spectators are allowed, which we are leaving now. Age, age group sports also are allowed. So let's talk now about our club experience. My football players did not train regularly since 15th of March 2020. And individually, they had different approaches, different training exposure since that period. I mean during the quarantine period. It is important thus to note some first challenges like a decrease of muscle strength and elasticity, a possible increase of body fat and body weight, an increase, of course, and a decrease of performance. I'm talking about aerobic power and muscle strength. The actual literature suggests that each week of total inactivity leads to an overall loss of out of up to 10 percent of fitness and that 20 days of inactivity could decrease the VO2 max. As medical staff in each club, we try to read about, uh, to read about this pandemic, to search for evidence, to distinguish what is true from what is urban legend. Some of us participated also in the elaboration of the hospital guidelines on COVID-19 return to play for athletes. In the end, it was not easy, especially in the beginning, to find the right answers, to educate on the right way our athletes, to find the best practice. During the quarantine phase, our fitness coach gave a training program to our players with some online sessions. We, as medical staff, doctor, physiotherapist, massagist, kept contact with them. Of course, I speak about our club. In other clubs, there is also nurses. So we kept contact with our players through phone calls and online meetings, mainly to give recommendation on safety measures, on injury prevention, while training alone, of course, and mental health. It's very important because uh, uh, at that period, in the general population, we, we were aware that some people were not um, sometimes taking their responsibilities and uh, not paying attention. The athletes or the football player, if he doesn't pay attention, he will harm himself, his teammates and his club. So, as the previous year, my team was relegated to second division, we were leading the second division, trying to come back to first division. And this unpredictable pandemic make a stop, made a stop to our progression. And all the teams, all the team members were worried that it could be a game changer. Then to bring back football safely, QSL, Qatar Star League, in co coordination or collaboration with Aspetar, our hospital, and the Ministry uh, of Public Health, established a protocol made of three phases. This protocol was dynamic and susceptible to change any time according to the pandemic evolution and, of course, Ministry of Public Health uh, recommendation. Yet, very important to note that the aim of this protocol was not to guarantee the 100% safety of all participants, which is impossible, 
but to ensure medically justifiable, justifiable uh, risk-based on the importance of football socially and economically, and on the development of the pandemic. There was about 12 days delay between the first and the second division dates of resuming activity. And on June 25, 2020, we did, our team did a first uh, test, and those who had a negative result entered the hotel, the hotel for a quarantine of two weeks. So, during this period, we were using three buses with 30% capacity, like uh, for a 50 persons bus, uh, uh, 50 persons only were allowed. We were moving only from rooms, from our personal rooms to the field, to the training field. Food was served only in the rooms, in individual boxes you see here. Gathering in rooms was prohibited. Security guys were, were posted in the corridors. Uh, it was important to not feel alone, to not increase the stress and mental load. And the use of the room as a medical clinic was limited to under, was limited and under strict regulation. Basic hygiene measures, hand sanitizing, cough, uh, sneeze hygiene, social distancing were applied, of course. Team meetings were only done with sufficient distancing and in, in large rooms. And of course, while taking appointments, and it was not easy. Training clothes and equipment were disinfected between sessions. Using changing rooms was not allowed. The shower was done in room. Players were screened by club medical staff and temperature checked daily. Honestly, it was a stressful uh, period. Players or staff with high temperature or with any flu symptoms would have been quarantined. Hopefully, it did not happen for us, for our team. And I remember in that period, we did a meeting among club doctors of the different teams living in that hotel to better collaborate and uh, decide on key points and discuss key points like uh, safety, food, and injury treatment. I don't have time to detail everything, of course, but uh, it is all available in our uh, QSL uh, protocol. Then we were, we were uh, tested again a second time, and those negative left the next day. And we received this paper, paper attesting that we had two weeks of uh, quarantine. Let's talk about phase two. In phase two, the rules were same, but we were living this time at home, using our own person, our own personal car individually. Team training and friendly matches were allowed with some uh, limitation. And swab tests were carried out every three, five days. And serology blood tests done on a monthly basis. The great team performing these tests for us is composed of NSMP nurses, physios, and admin. And to schedule our testing lists, I have to acknowledge the great coordination of Dr. Hassoun, Monty, Dr. Montasar, uh, Professor Karim Shameri, and all the NSMP staff, uh, administration staff. Also, our colleague to which we were sending uh, our testing lists Mr. Abdurraouf Hashem, who took over Miss Zainab Landolsi, who did a great job, a great person, by the way. At that period, we faced many challenges, like doing a successful education, limiting the access to the medical clinics, to one player with one physiotherapist or one doctor, and only when necessary and following Aspetar COVID-19 medical protocol, and we limited time in the changing rooms. 
it was not easy with our football players. Wearing masks outside field for all concerned people was very important, especially for the football players when they are on the bench, when they are injured. They did not understand that they have to wear masks, not like the players playing on the field. And of course, the social distancing. I will not forget also the hand sanitizing and wearing gloves, too many gloves. Let's talk now about phase three. In phase three, official matches were finally conducted behind closed doors with no spectators to finish the previous season. There was entry checkpoints to the stadium to check temperature and ihtiraz. And as club doctor, as I was signing my players list received from Aspetar with the negative results, and I was giving this paper in the checkpoint. All the safety rules were still used, of course, and seating on the bench was on every third seat. Can you, you can see it here in the photo. Till now, of course, we are doing this. After a few matches, we finished the season and Al Khritiyat Sport Club secured the promotion to first division with three rounds to spare. The protocol adapted progressively to the Ministry of Public Health recommendation with a decrease of restriction from time to time. And this led to a decrease of in PCR frequency once a week, uh, two days before matches in general, uh, and uh, the acceptance of a limited number of spectators. You can see here in the photo. So in the end, I'd like first to invite you uh, to read our Aspetar clinical guideline, if not yet done, for a safe return to sport of our uh, football players. It is uh, available for free download uh, in our Aspetar website. I'll say also that uh, the virus causing the actual pandemic is reported to have been transmitted from human to human with a variable symptom uh, profile, and that underlying health uh, conditions that affect the cardiovascular respiratory and immune system confer an increased risk of severe illness and death. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused the most significant disruption to the world's board wide sporting calendar since World War II, you imagine. Infected athletes with COVID-19 are often asymptomatic, but please don't consider them always safe. In 80% of cases, the infection is contained with viral clearance within 10 to 14 days, but it could lead sometimes to an acute respiratory distress syndrome. Prevention of this condition consists of the infection control, in the healthcare setting, like a club medical clinic, and personal preventive measures, including social distancing, wearing masks, etc. I already discussed about the testing, PCR test and serology, and about uh, the treatment. To finish, I'll say that uh, this pandemic results resulted in uh, cancelled events competitions played behind closed doors, postponed tournaments, and many international federation and sport authorities across the world made guidelines. I'm, I'm sure many of us have read these uh, multiple guidelines from Australia to UK to France to United States, etc. Risk assessment and return to sport arrangements have to be, ha have to be compliant with the latest Ministry of Public Health recommendation, as this may change over time, and graded resumption of formal training should not occur until appropriate measures specific to the sport and the training environment have been implemented and have been clearly communicated to all staff. And here, the role of the medical staff is very important to communicate with the administrative staff, with the technical staff and with the players and even the kid men. Believe me, they are very important. I was not able, you understand why, to speak about uh, situation, uh, our specific situation in the club, but you can have other kid men seek, for example, and you have to protect the kid men who are with the first team. They have not to be in contact with the others when they sleep, when they eat. So 
some careful step will change and save your team from some uh, absences. In this pandemic, uh, medical staff in football clubs did not stay at home, but worked together since June 2020 for a safe return to sport and to protect their athletes. They did not stay at home. Here are the photo of these 17 medical staff. Please allow me to say these 17 heroes teams. We had here first, I did not say their name, my colleagues from uh, Mesimir uh, Sport Club, Al Shamel Sport Club, Arayan Sport Club, Al Ahli Sport Club, Al Arabi Sport Club, Dihail Sport Club, Garrafa Sport Club, Khritiyat, my club, of course, with my great team, Ramadan, Usama, Islam, and Hussam, also Farooq. Al Khur Sport Club, Maidr Sport Club, Marhia Sport Club, Qatar Sport Club, Al Sad Sport Club, Shahani Sport Club, Al Wakra Sport Club with my friend Mukhtar, Al Siliya Sport Club, and in the end, and not least, Umslel Sport Club with Dr. Nuruddin Garbi. But to be honest, other healthcare providers did more than us and were in the front line and gave their lives to save people. I share this photo composed of hundreds of small photos of them in memory of their courage because they gave their life to save other people that they did not know. So thank you for your attention.